Hi all, in this video, let's discuss some of the JavaScript interview questions. This is a part seven of the series. So in this video, let's discuss these points one by one. So the first point is, what's the difference between the in operator and has own operator? So both the operators we use to check whether an object contains the property or not. So that's the main purpose of using the both the operators like in operator or has own property operator. So firstly, let's discuss the basic uh, functionality. Like uh, if you have an object like this, an object with a property, a key, and uh, one as a value. To check whether a uh, key is present in the object or not, by using in operator, we are going to do like this. And our uh, key name in object. It returns true if the object is exist in the object. If not, it will return false. The same with the object dot has own property. We need to use this in this way object dot has own property and we'll be dis keeping the property which we need to check whether it is exist or not it returns true because a is available in that object so if you're giving a uh, property or key which is not existing in this object so then that will return false like this so this is a basic usage of in and has own property so both these operators will support symbols so for example, this is how we are going to create a symbol that this will return in reference to the in this symbol object. So now we are using this symbol reference in the object like this. So this is how we'll be using. So we are using a unique key as a symbol as well. Okay, usually in, in the object, the keys should be strings. So now we can also keep the symbols from a6. Uh, I have done a dedicated video on the ES6 symbols. You can check that. I will keep that in the end, end cards. So here we are using the symbol as a key. So now we can check the symbol is available in the object or not. So both this gives the true. Both they has own property and in operator property will support ES6 symbols. So now let's discuss the main differences. There are two differences. Let's discuss them. The in operator will support the inherit properties. It will support the inherit properties. It means uh, the object is the base class. Usually the object would be the base class in JavaScript. Okay, so this object will have some properties like constructor, uh, like a prototype and has own property. So for any of the JavaScript object, so these three would be having in common. Okay, these properties would be inherit from the parent class object. Okay, so these are the inherit properties. Okay, the in operator returns true for the inherit properties. So if you say constructor in object, yes, in this object, constructor will be there because a main object is a base class, the super class. So as this object would be the subclass for this, it will inherit this constructor as well, constructor property as well. That's the reason in operator will return true for all the inherited properties as well. Whereas coming to the has own property, it, it's not like that. It will check whether the property is present in the object or not. If that is not present, you will be just returning the false like this. So this is the first difference. The second difference is the in operator will uh, tell whether the method is available or not. So for example, this is a base class. We wrote one getter method like base property return 42. And we have another child class which extends the base class. And uh, it also has some getter method. We are creating two objects to these uh, classes. So now if you observe the base property, so this is a method. This method is available in the class or not. That is what we are trying to check. So base property in base is true. It returns true because in operator will help us to check to verify whether the getter or setter function is available in the object or not. So in that case, in operator helps us a lot. If you see child prop, so this is also one getter method. So you are checking whether this method is available in this object or not in this class or not. So it returns true if the method is available. So in this way, before you are applying any two string method. So for example, uh, you can uh, understand in this way. If you are ap applying any two string method, so before applying any method, you can check whether that operator is available on that object or not. So if it, that object is uh, available, then you can use that. If not, you can't, you should not use that. So in this case, you're uh, finding whether the getter is available. Yes, it is available. Then it returns true. Then you can access this operator. 
this method then you can call this getter method right in that way you will you will be not getting in any uh, null pointer issues like that okay so this is the way uh, in operator uh, will help us so whereas coming to the has own property it will return false it will not check the methods setter and getter methods so as per the thumb rule if you want to check whether a properties or key is available in the object or not it's good to go with has own property if you want to check whether a getter or setter method is available or not it's good to go with the in operator the main difference is in operator inherits the properties like constructor has own property and prototypes whereas a has own property will not inherit them whereas in in operator will help us to check whether the getter and setter functions are there or not whereas a has own property will not do that so this is the main differences between in and has own properties hope you understand this so coming to the second point so uh, let me comment this first so so the second point is what is the purpose or what is the need of using this double negation operator okay let's discuss that okay uh, why we use this double negation so for example if you have a value like false so you know if you use one negation like this this value becomes true so we know this so most of them thinks that so uh, this operator is an uh, useless operator or uh, it gives the same result every time so it gives the same uh, like if you keep false and if you give two negations so obviously it will give again false so in sense uh, one negation is true and another negation will make it false so obviously it will make the initial value so this is what the misunderstanding will be having with the double negation operator but the thing is we need to understand this in this way if you have a value if you keep a single negation what happens means the value would be any value so whether it would be a integer value whether it would be a string value any value if you keep first negation then that will be converted into the boolean so for example now you are keeping nan so if you want to check a uh, nan okay not a number so i will keep this operator so now this will return me true okay that is the first step as this returns true i want to negate this value so there this will become false negation negation double negation and nan operator then now this returns false so it means you are you want to check any condition not with the true with the false then you are going to give the second negation the first negation will convert this any any type of value into the boolean value this is the first negation will be doing the second negation will help us to convert to cast this to the uh, another boolean value like if it has true it will return false if it has false it will return the true that is what it will be doing so this is the main purpose and the usage of the double notation if you see here if you give undefined first negation if you use negation to undefined it returns true if you give null negation for one negation to null it will return true like this all these are the negations if you give first negation it will give true like this and based upon if you give the second negation it will return false in a similar way all the other expressions apart from this if you give all the other expressions with single negation those will return false if you give double notation to that it will return the true so this is all about the purpose and the usage of this double negation so coming to the third point so how to check whether a given number is even or not without using the modulus operator so we know a concept like a, if a number is there like 4 modulus 2 if the remainder is equal to 0 if it is equal to 0 then we can e say easily that it is an even if it is not equal to 0 then we can say that is it is an odd number so this is how we will be doing whether uh, the number is even or not but without using the modulus operator why how to how we need to do is we'll show you two methods so here i wrote a function so we are calling 5 and 4 two times you are calling this function how to check whether a number is even or not without the modulus function the first thing is you divide that number you will be dividing that number n you got 5 you will divide with 2 and multiply that with 2 if that is equal to the same number then this is a even okay if it is not it is an odd number okay here one thing we need to do is we need to parse int here 
because you will be getting 6. Point, uh, like a 2.5 like that so if the 2.5 is into 2.5 it will obviously determine the even number so that's the reason you need to do a parse int here so that the n value is 5 now so 5 divided by 2 you will be getting 2.5 and now you are doing parsing so 2.5 becomes 2 2 into 2 it becomes 4 and now 4 is not equal to 5 so that's the reason you can return this as a false okay so uh, let's do the just return back this okay i'm just returning back the solution so now let's uh, decouple one, one step by step like what happens here means so the parse int so parse int of okay parse int of 5 divided by 2 so what happens here is it returns 2.5 Actually, it returns 2.5 as we wrote parse int, it, it goes to 2 into 2. Again, I'm doing into 2. So I will get equal to 5. I'm checking this. So 4 equal to 5? No. It is not equal to no. So that's the reason it returns false. So we are checking whether the number is equal to the same number. If you divide that number with 2 and multiply with the number 2. So let's check this. So this is the first way of the solution. So definitely you need to parse the solution. See, you got false for the five. When you pass five, you got true when you pass four. Okay, when you pass four, what happens? Four divided by two, it returns two. Even if you parse int also, it will return true. The reason why we are parsing here is, if you not parse it, it will direct any value is in, it would return true. Because 2.5 into two, it returns obviously five. Five into five so that's the reason five equal to five so it would be like a true in all the situations so that's the reason you need to parse int so that with the 2.5 you are only fetching the two value and four would not be equal to five that's the reason so this is the first solution so uh, let me comment out this so let's discuss the second solution so how to uh, do this the second solution is we'll be using the bitwise operator here so uh, this is a single ampersand. This is not double ampersand. If you use double ampersand, it would be like a conditional logic. But this is a single ampersand. This is known as a bitwise operator. So how it works? So uh, let me tell you this. Like uh, if the n, n means 5 or 4, whatever the value you are sending. You are using only one ampersand. And you are uh, returning false. So. I will explain you what is this return true. So if it goes inside this, it means it is not, it is an odd. If it is not going inside this even, then it is even. So let me explain one by one how, how it works. So firstly, you are sending five ampersand. So bitwise operator with one. Okay, what happens internally? Let's discuss about the bitwise operator. Bitwise operator means we need to go into the binary digits. So for the binary digits, we know 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3. Like this, we need to divide. So it means 8, 4, 2, 1. Okay. So this is how we will try to decouple the binary numbers. 8, 4, 2, 1. Now let's discuss 5. How 5 is represented in the binary. So 0, 1, 0, 1. This is how 5 is represented. So this is mean by 5. Because 4, you have given 1 at the 4 and 1 at the 1. So 4 plus 1, 5. So that's the reason five, this is how 5 is represented in the binary. So how 1 is represented? So 0, 0, 0, 1. Because only 1, right? It has 1. So 1. So this is how 1 is represented in the binary structure. So now do one thing. So uh, again, read the ampersand operator functionality. If you read here, the ampersand bitwise operator sets each byte to one if both the bytes are one. So if both are one, then it sets to one. So that's the reason. Zero, zero, both are not one. So it sets to zero. One, zero, 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 zero. But one, one, when both the bits are one, if you observe here, if both the bits are one, then it goes to one. So that's the reason we can give here as one. So what is the value here you are getting? It is one, right? If this is equal to a one, then that is an odd number. So that is how we have divided. We have used five bitwise operator one. If this is an odd number, it means it will enter into the if loop because it returns one. So that's the reason it enters into the if loop. It returns the false, means it is an odd number. 
so let's do the same with the four how it will uh, be there so let's do 842 okay this is how binary represents so now four how the four is represented zero one zero zero this is how the four is represented in the binary numbers so how one is represented because we need to do four like uh, we need to do like this right four ampersand one this is what we need to do so this is how four is represented and one is represented like this so one is represented like this so as per the bitwise operator what we need to do if you get both ones then you need to keep one okay as we are not getting both ones we are keeping all zeros here so it will become zero so as this value is zero it will not go into the for loop if loop so it returns true it means it is an even number so this is the second approach by using the bitwise operator hope you understand the video thanks for watching please subscribe for more videos this is how you are going to check whether a uh, number is even or not without using the modulus function i have described you with the bitwise operator and the another operator like uh, dividing with two and multiplying with the two thanks for watching please subscribe for more videos